Hello, it's just David here with my weekly message. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about our um, holiday club. We haven't had a holiday club for a few years, but we're kind of back on. Now we've got quite a few children coming, but there's still places. So if you've got, um, or you know, primary school age children locally who'd like to come to a holiday club first week of the holidays, um, that'd be great. Put them in touch with me. Um, and uh, yeah, it's primary school age. Um, we also need a bit of help. If you'd like to come and help, let me uh, know. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what it's about, but I just thought I'd give you the sort of logistics first. First week of some holidays, um, we do it Monday to Friday. Our children are there 10 to 12. Um, help us there a bit longer, obviously, just to sort of help. And um, yeah, lots of sort of crafts and games and, um, you know, a few silly songs and stuff and uh, a bit of sort of Bible teaching as well. So we use, a garden use the scripture using the material. And this year we're using uh, a new one which is called Wonder Zone. Probably shows up the wrong way around on video, but there we are. Wonder Zone. And it's called, subtitle is Discovering God's Wonderful World. It's, it's kind of about the interface between science and uh, religion or science and Christianity and about sort of learning to rejoice in God's wonderful world. And, you know, through science, we know more and more about it. So there's a, a practical thing. And then I'll talk a little bit about what that might mean for us. Uh, more generally. Um, the practical thing is that one of the things that kind of makes holiday clubs work is is kind of having a kind of theme and a scenario. So, um, you know, so if the leaders in the room, etc., kind of look like a sort of, you know, scientist laboratory. So if you've got any, I mean, sometimes people give us slightly valuable equipment, but if you've got sort of, which isn't, you know, great having some very delicate piece of equipment in a room of children playing sort of ball games. Um, but but if you've got stuff that you know, I mean, basically we'll give it back to you. But, but you know, so that you know would be what a scientist would have around, so it isn't fragile. That'd be great just just to create that atmosphere. If you have got a lab coat, you could lend somebody. That'd be great. And um, yeah, that that would that would really sort of help us. Um, um, and, you know, the terminology is, you know, that we're doing our research, we're in teams, here's the professor. It's that sort of thing to, you know, and that, that seems to kind of work quite uh, well with these uh, clubs. But I thought I'd just sort of, you know, this, is, this video isn't just here to advertise, but to sort of reflect on things a bit, to, to talk about sort of science and faith. Um, it's just one of those things that, um, yeah, it's become a kind of, something that you know is sort of quite popular to to think about and I suppose you know if everything I I slightly get it's become too popular because <laughs> it's sort of um you know I hate to be um fashionable as you probably noticed uh so you know but it is kind of my subject you know I was originally university of science degree um <laughs> wasn't brilliant but you know enough to kind of get through and um obviously then studied a lot more theology when I was going to be ordained, uh, but then sort of kept on studying after um, sort of working as a priest. And, and you yeah, know, what I was studying in was, was this sort of interface. Not so much the sort of, I think people often think it's the sort of the content, you know, do you believe in evolution or creation or something like that? Um, it wasn't really that. I was, I was at a slightly more philosophical level, um, which perhaps might be less interesting but it was it was sort of asking and, and looking at two particular people as you because you have to sort of narrow these things down but but asking you know how do scientists work um or natural scientists work and, and how do theologians work and you know are they are they working in fundamentally different ways is that why they come to sometimes different conclusions or or actually are they working in quite similar ways it's just in in rather different areas um and that there isn't a sort of terrible conflict between them so i mean you know by the book it's already a bestseller um but i thought i'd just sort of reflect for a few moments on that um generally i mean as ever i think i think slightly the, the tide has turned i mean i think you know popular culture whether we like oh it's one of the things is it you know there's these various sort of esoteric university debates and then about 50 years later they kind of enter common parlance and common culture so sort of in the sort of 20s um 
it was really the heyday of what was called logical positivism. Um, you don't need to remember that, but it's just the time that really, you know, you thought that religion was old hat. Science was the only way to tell you the answer to any, anything. And it, it wasn't just sort of, you know, theology. It was a lot of the humanities were affected. And really science was where it was at. Science, you've got to remember, you know, the, the, the 20s, 30s onwards, you know, science was doing amazing things. It already had done amazing things and was doing even more amazing things. You think, you know, theory of relativity is sort of a decade old by that time. Um, quantum mechanics is sort of kicking off. You know, it's just amazing. Um, and, and yeah, so there was this kind of idea that there, there was really nothing else worth worth studying and nothing else. Certainly they could tell you the truth about how, how the world was. And so kind of, and I think kind of almost then it was, you know, my day, 19, when I was younger, 1980s or 70s, or, you know, almost 50 years later, that that's kind of what a lot of people thought. I think the tide is sort of turning now. I mean, maybe I'm just being hopeful. I don't, I don't think a lot more people are coming to church or anything like that. But I think actually people don't say things so easily. That, oh, well, science has you know, got rid of all that. Because it plainly hasn't. Um, in some ways, in quite sort of not very comfortable ways. I and mean, one of the things is the sort of, since the 70s and 80s, the, the rise of uh, particular forms of Islam have meant that, you know, we've, geopolitically we've had to take religion into account we can't you know i think people assume that you know religion will pay no part in sort of international life and i think we see other and also in it's not just islam it's in russia today i mean it it does plainly you know you can't just discount it and say you know religion doesn't matter anymore i say for better or, or or for worse but i think people have also got sort of slightly tired of saying well you know science has disproved all that um because it's not what science does um and again i think it's interesting that you know you go back and it's you know c.s lewis and the screw tape letters um it's been you know written a long long time ago but i mean lewis was really sort of prescient um and there's a bit where the so the the screw tape letters are about a devil trying to tempt somebody away from christianity uh, and it's it's quite funny and witty. Um, but one of the things it says is, you know, um, ah, he's you know he's discovered science. Um, well, just just be careful because there's some sad cases amongst the you know particularly amongst the modern physicists. Um, don't rejoice over this too easily. And the point that C.S. Lewis makes is that many of us think we know what 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 science says and how it works. And also, to be fair, I think a lot of, you know, Christians have a, have a kind of have an idea about how faith works without being too inquisitive. And, you know, C.S. Lewis's advice to the devil, as it were, at that point is <coughs> keep it vague. Um, you know, give people the impression, make things impressionistic. You know, we, we get the impression that with all this science, there can't be a God. Don't get them actually to kind of look at the issues and think very clearly because that that actually might be dangerous um and i think that's kind of right i think a lot of people on both sides of this debate go through with sort of vague impressions you know well since evolution since you know all the modern things now we've got the internet you know there can't be a god i mean all of those if you think about that utterly ridiculous conclusions to come to i think to be fair to christians sometimes christians you know, we'll go through and say, well, you know, I, I'm, I know about science, but I've just got faith anyway. And in a sense, they're rather vague. They don't think about it uh, either. And it's true that, you know, a lot of scientists um, are atheists. That's, that's undoubtedly true. By no means all. Um, by no means all. But I think what, what scientists and, and I think, you know, Christians have in common is being, you know, is wanting to look more deeply at things. I think that, you know, that's, that's what kind of inspires science. That's what, you know, gets people going on it. Um, and to, you know, not be satisfied with those kind of, you know, vague impressions. Um, but, you know, actually sort of say, well, you know, what, what does science say about the world? What does faith say about the world? Are they compatible? Or are there some real sort of contradictions between them that can't be really resolved? And, you know, if you're a, 
if you're a Christian, do you have to believe a lot of, um, you know, frankly, unbelievable stuff? Um, you know, do you have to believe a certain sort of Christianity that's perhaps very conservative about, um, you know, creation and how the Bible is interpreted? Or, you know, are there ways of sort of, uh, you know, understanding the Christian faith and the Bible, which are more compatible with the modern scientific worldview? Obviously, I think there are, otherwise it wouldn't be um, here. And as I said, I think when people look deeply, and because they, it, it does mean that, you know, many scientists will become atheists. But I don't, but as I say, also quite a lot become Christians. And I don't think that's, you know, that should stop us looking deeply, because I think it, it's just that they're more likely to have thought things clearly through to, to a conclusion. Um which is, you know, slightly different from, as I say, staying at that sort of slightly vague stage. And I think, you know, there's a variety of reasons for that. But I think that's where, you know, scientists and theologians are, are well, one of the many places that they're agreed, which is that, yeah, you, you can't stick with surface impressions. They're often misleading. They're often just picking up on the on the zeitgeist, on the spirit of the age. And, and, you know, it's kind of how lazy journalism works, you know, the sort of assumptions that we all have. And actually, one of the things that theologians and scientists want to do is, is to delve deeply into things and get to the bottom of things. Of course, we never will get to the bottom of things. I mean, that's also the joy of both of those two disciplines, that you're not going to sort of, you know, it's a bit like on... Um, David Mitchell on some comedy programme said, you know, I've printed out the internet and I've read it and it's very interesting. Um, you know, you're, you're actually, you're, you're never going to get to the bottom of it. It's, there's, you know, it's the great thing about science is that as soon as you open up a door, there's sort of 200 other doors open. Um, you know, it's, it, there's just more and more and more. And that's just rather wonderful. And I think theology should be like that. That's what's, and that's the joy of discovery. That I think people who aren't sort of, who don't have an interest in these things kind of miss out on. Of course, same of anything else, isn't it? And once you start reading books and being into literature or into music or into art, you realise, you know, you never get to say, right, I've done art, now I'm going to do music and then I'll do literature. You know, you, that would be a ridiculous thing to say because there's always more to learn about all those sorts of things or sports or whatever. So I think, you know, just that idea of, of more and more discovery, of kind of trying to get to the bottom of things, but at the same time realising you never have quite gone to the bottom of things. That's what theologians decide to have in common. And that's kind of what Christians call wonder. And I think that's what we're, we're trying to get at, that that sense of wonder and, and awe at the universe is something that lies at the heart of theology and at the heart of science. And hopefully we'll get a bit of that in our holiday club. Thank you.